In this video, I'll be showing you how I go about doing seamless backdrop in Photoshop. Obviously, the first thing that you want to do is import your image to Photoshop, duplicate the layout first, move over to your crop tool to have it at the perfect ratio that you want it to be. That's if you're uploading to Instagram. If you really don't care about the ratio, then you could leave it. You want it to be 4 by 5. What do you want to do just to make sure that the model is in the middle, obviously? Try to do that and make sure that everything looks good. The model is in the middle of the frame. And Photoshop can also do a good job for me with content that way to make sure that everything is a little bit extended to these other parts of the frame. So I'm going to click there. You can give it a little bit of time for you to load until your image finally shows up. Photoshop does a decent job with just extending the backdrop in general, but we're going to do a little bit more. The next thing I'd like to do here is use the rectangular marquee tool. What I will do here is select a portion of the backdrop that I think looks good enough. Click Ctrl J or Command J and then click Ctrl T. Then what you want to do is make sure that this here isn't selected as uh, it will expand too much and the details won't match what is actually in the backdrop. So just Ctrl Z there and click this off so you extend it. Click Enter and then I'm going to do the same thing with these other parts of the backdrop. So go to the original image, find the parts of the backdrop that you think looks um, good enough to extend. Command or Ctrl J, Ctrl T and extend. Though the backdrop looks a little bit weird right now, but we're going to fix that up later. We're going to try to do the same thing for the rest of the image here, but what we're going to be doing here is we're going to merge everything. So hold your shift key and click on the layers and merge them together. Then you Ctrl J to duplicate. I'll be moving over to my clone stamp tool now and um, making sure that it's set to the current layer. I also like to use a really soft brush for my clone stamp. It could probably be 50 or less than that so that it looks good. So for something like this, I would usually recommend you use like a large brush so that way wherever you sample can cover a large area. You could always reduce the brush to make sure that it fits wherever you're trying to clean up. You want to really take your time with this to make sure it doesn't like interfere with the model as well. So the next thing we are going to be doing here is we are going to um, create a mask. The reason we're creating this mask is so that we can clean up some of the backdrop and clone stamp on our hair. So we're going to move back to the brush tool. Make sure you zoom in for this. Make sure the brush is set to black so that we can just you know, brush over. What we have done so far is making sure that the backdrop has been extended. The next step we are going to be taking here, merging up the layers again, duplicate the layer and cleaning up the backdrop or retouching it. You will want to use your spot healing brush tool to get rid of some of the um, stuff from the image here. Zooming in and then getting rid of some of the stuff from the backdrop. Healing brush tool does a great job with it. I've cleaned like a decent amount of things from the backdrop, duplicating the layer again and moving back my frequency separation. Now it doesn't matter if you're using 16 bits or 8 bit frequency separation, but you want to um, use frequency separation and try to zoom out here and look at the backdrop. So you want to adjust your, your radius until it's at a point where the backdrop is just losing some of the texture. So you want to like adjust it. So let's say around four or five, I think I just came in at five. Then focusing on your low frequency layer, move over to your mixer brush tool. Make sure that the wet is somewhere around here. The wet determines how much smoothness you get. Maybe rumples like this, sometimes they're usually too tough to get rid of. What you want to do is increase your wet to fix that. For the top side of the backdrop, that is, is the back of the backdrop, not the floor. Make sure that your brush size is good enough and you want to stroke in the opposite direction of the lines and everything on the backdrop. So you want to stroke up and down. Then for the bottom side of the backdrop, you want to stroke sideways.
This is the before frequency separation. This is after frequency separation. If there are still any imperfect parts of an image, you'd want to still merge the layer again, duplicate it, and then you can use your clone stamps to now to clone in any part of the image that has imperfection. So you can clone this part of the image right here. So if there are little parts of your image that you want to clean up, you can always clone the nearest area, then maybe clean that part up a bit. You can do that for your whole image overall. For the purpose of this video, I won't be going to slow the process, but this is just a really, really quick way that you can go about cleaning up your backdrop and making it look cleaner. So this is before and after. If you guys love this video, if you guys want an even more in-depth tutorial on skin retouching as well, you can like this video, leave a comment below. You don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you in the next one. Take care and peace.